What is the crack lads and welcome back to another video. So we're banging out the videos today. I was gonna, gonna say something else there, but I thought against it. Anyway, I'm a bit hyper today. So we've got a new update file. We've already covered the console version of the game. We'll keep this a little shorter and a little sweeter because there is not as much like new stuff. A lot of the stuff that they've talked about with the console version, such as the UI stuff, such as like the missions, the match pass, all that sort of stuff. We've already covered that in three videos by now. So there'll be two videos up and another video coming out. I will be doing a dedicated match pass video later on today. So this is just kind of like a news update. I had a video yesterday that covered all the new events. Obviously the new events, the content, the cards, all that epic cards, legends, all that. That is linked, you know, from console to mobile. So they're shared across both. So whatever cards and legends are available in mobile are available in console and vice versa. So what we're going to focus on here today is for you Pez or eFootball mobile players. I still call it Pez every now and again, lads. Let me know if you do as well. If it's just a slip of the tongue, you know, slip of the tongue. But we do have a new update file for iOS and Android as well. So there's a couple of different things. Obviously, all of this page here, right? All of this page here is the same. All of this to all of this is the same. So if you have missed the other video... Just to give a run through of that, you've got match pass, you've got new way of signing players for standard player tickets, similar to how the nominating contracts will work, I imagine. You've got AI matches and challenge events. You can now change your national team or your real team in authentic match challenge events as well. So if you had picked Barcelona in a challenge event, you had to play as Barcelona through that entire event. Now you can just switch it, it says. Entry conditions, so there seems to be filters and seems to be like... Um, rules for like building a squad now for certain certain dream team challenge events there's new missions for new users of eFootball, changes to the menu layout of missions and more cursor change option options to semi-assist and assisted so again all of this is in my other video if you want to check that out check it out it's a 16 70 minute video and it goes into a lot of depth but for this we're just going to focus on the new edition or the new stuff that's going to be coming to mobile specifically so a lot of this stuff is shared across. As I said, you've got new team data, player photos, manager photos, strips, stadium graphics, boots, commentary photo, all that sort of stuff. It doesn't say anything about new animations. On the console edition, it does say about new animations. So uh, yeah, I mean, mobile guys aren't getting new animations uh, based on these patch notes. But yeah, it's interesting to note what will be different when it does actually update and launch. So now onto the gameplay fixes and adjustments. There's three pages of it here. Um, it's broken down into the same kind of way. So we've got first up dribbling, which I like to see an emphasis on dribbling. I think that balances the game a lot. If you can run around like a headless chicken after the ball, and not get punished dribbling is it's just a waste of time you need to have dribbling in as something that's a game changer that somebody can slow the pace down that you don't have to fill your team with you know 10 Mbappes you can slow the pace of the game down and control the pace of the game at your own leisure if you are able to pass the ball around the place and be an absolute beast in possession so they've implemented enhancements to the response when switching between a normal dribble and a dash dribble that means you know accelerate and pass with a dribble double touching with the sprint and then dashing forward with a dribble kind of like a trick move without being a trick move implemented adjustments so that when switching between a normal dribble and a dash dribble the directional inputs will now be reflected in a, in a more correct manner so again the way that they describe this um i'm not a massive player of the eFootball mobile i play it every now and again uh but yeah i'm not a massive massive player of it i'm usually you know if i get time to play it's always on console um but yeah obviously the improvements to dribbling are good and you can have a read through that they're renewed renewed reduced inertia for small angle turns so obviously you'll be able to turn a little bit tighter with Messi and players like neymar and that adjustments so that when dribbling past an opponent it is now less likely for a player to make contact and trip over so they actually they actually touch on this with the defendant back here as well um i'm just interested to see yeah they do so they have the exact same patch notes here for the mobile as you can see their ios android at the top this kind of links in with this fix the issue with where, where shoulder charge from seemingly illegal angles such as diagonally or behind are not called as fouls so it does link in with that that if you are past the player you've beaten him you've left him for for dead in his dust um you're going to be able to not be fouled from behind and get called for it. You know, if a player actually fouls you, then you're going to get a call for it. Where it would seem to be balanced at the moment with the current gameplay that if you did that, you more often did not get away with the foul. And then they also talk about, you know, stunning passes making it more difficult uh, or more easy to uh, get them off. And then also when you're actually uh, performing a kick 
or a shot right after attempting a large angle turn, the kick can now be performed more easily. So the second page then talks about passing, shooting, defending, goalkeeping, and other gameplay enhancements. So starting with here, just to mix it up a bit, they have implemented adjustments so that the player that can make the runs off a, off a 1-2. So sometimes if you were making a run and say you were bringing the ball forward with, with Paddy V or uh, Makalele in midfield, obviously because they're a more defensive-based player, you would imagine that they'd pass the ball even if you wouldn't touch it. They pass it, they'll run a small bit, but then they'll go back into position. But if you've got a winger, if you've got Neymar, sometimes he would stop up and like decelerate. He wouldn't actually run on and accelerate into space or burst past the defender. So they fixed that. They have adjustments made to the teammates who are now making forward runs and will take the offside line into more. Uh, they'll think about it a little bit more and, whether, and they'll decide whether to deaccelerate or accelerate or to stay put adjustments to the positioning of players for team play style out wide so that the players basically all they're saying in all of this here is that players that play out wide are going to stay out wide and players that play central are going to stay central and players that are more attacking are going to attack more and players that are defensive are going to defend more that's basically what they're saying here without you know with four or five paragraphs or four or five lines in this paragraph Fix the issue where shoulder charge has covered that and fix the issue regarding throw-ins and adjustments so that players will adequately, adequately dodge away from teammates in oncoming shots. Goalkeepers, they just talk about in the case of penalty kicks. Now easier for goalkeepers to save pacey shots or shots towards the edge of the goal and parry them away and not back out into the danger area, which is big if it works. Defense, shooting and passing. So they've increased the overall speed of low passes. They've adjusted the low passes so that the cursor will now switch to a more suitable teammate. And they've adjusted the passing so that a more suitable kick and motion will be triggered when attempting to pass near opposition players. So the animations are just probably a little sped up, which obviously needs to be done for responsiveness issues. You are having that balance all the time between realistic sim versus responsive kind of like, I won't say arcade, but yeah, responsive kind of... Um, you know, super kind of uber sim is what I would call it. Kind of arcade-ish. Uh, fix the issue regarding loose ball situations where kicks and passes cannot be performed even if the player is first to the ball. So that would happen that if there was an interception or a block uh, on a pass that two players would run to the ball and you'd, you know, you'd power up the power bar but nothing would happen. Shooting, they also talk about imp increasing the the odds of getting a dip it shot or rising shot on these, the attempts would be more accurate on them, the players that have that player skill. Adjustments so that when attempting a shot in the ball for the ball in mid-air, both a normal shot and stunning shot have a better dip on them. Implementing enhancements to the accuracy of first-time shots off low passes from diagonally behind. Again, that's something, I don't know with the wording of that, do they mean that that's the passes? Uh, it is in the shooting way, but the, the shooting paragraph, but the way that they describe it, it sounds like to me that they're going to be about like it's the passing that you shoot like that you'll be able to do a first time shot from a pass that comes into you when your body is kind of like your back is to the ball kind of to the ball. Uh, I don't really know how to explain it. I need to draw a diagram. But uh, yeah, look, if they're going to improve the shooting, that's all that matters. And then they also talk about defense uh, where they talk about the adjustments that the cursor would switch to a more appropriate player. Um yeah, everybody everybody would be happy with defending. I mean, look, lads, I think if they balance the dribbling and if they balance all this defending stuff, I think everything else would fall back into place. I am a little worried about the speed of the low passes, especially for players that play on the automated uh, one-bar pass assist to fully automated pass assist. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. And then the last iOS Android update uh, file details that they have on the page here is just a lot of general fixes so you can have a read through that it's just all about eliminating bugs updating the ui uh you know making it a little bit more ease of access and easier you know the ux as well at uh, user experience um and a couple of other bits and pieces like you know matchmaking process cancelling and alert messages and squad numbers resetting back and all that sort of stuff so that is it for me, lads. Let me know what you think. That is just a mobile update. Let me know if you want to check out the console version of this. I go into it in a little bit more detail, but let me know which version you guys play. Or do you play both? Do you play console? Let me know if you're console gang or mobile gang or both gang. So yeah, <laughs> let me know. I'll talk to you later, lads. We'll be back with a couple of more videos over the next day or two. Peace.